this piece right here, which is the Iron City Rifle Works Berserker Light 15 inch handguard. Uh, so this is the newer model of their Berserker handguard. Um, the uh, machining is a little bit different than on the original. Um, and uh, this is a really, uh, really nice looking handguard, guys. It's uh, um, super kind of modern looking. The ergonomically, it you know it's real comfortable to to hold on to. The, I've kind of I haven't fully fastened uh, the rifle, you know, installed everything on the rifle real tight yet. But um, I did uh, take the opportunity to. Uh, rough fit the barrel on the handguard on just so I could see what everything looked and felt like and um, This is a pretty impressive uh, handguard um, You know, there's This is just kind of my initial impressions um, The build quality the finish quality is uh, really good on this um, the coating which is a, a type 3 hard anodized coating seems very um, very uniform across the whole thing. If, if anything, if I had anything, you know, I don't know if it's negative to say about it, but, uh, one thing I do notice is the, some of the edges, or not some of, it's, it's, it's all these edges do on the corners, they are a little bit sharp. I don't really notice it, uh, to where it's nothing that's gonna, like, tear into your skin. It's just a, it's a bold and aggressive pattern. So, like I said, I don't know if that's, I'm not going to say that's a negative because I think it's by design. It's not like some of them are smooth and some of them are rough. They're, they're all pretty aggressive texture. Uh, and, uh, but it, it makes for a really good grip on this gun or on this uh, handguard. Um, so, you know, what might be one person's negative if they don't like that little bit of too aggressive of a, of a feel and finish might be another person's positive that wants a real good positive firm grip on the handguard. So let's go over some of the, the features here. Um, <clears throat> probably the coolest thing about this handguard is actually the barrel nut. And uh, I do have this partially installed that's kind of just rough fit. I don't have this totally torqued down yet. Um, but this is the barrel nut for the handguard. And uh, the, one of the coolest features about this handguard is that this barrel nut doesn't need to be timed uh, for the gas tube. You basically just torque this to to your desired uh, torque rating, and it's good to go. You don't have to time the, the flats uh, on the barrel nut with anything. You just tighten it down, and, and the gas tube is going to line right up based off the you know the port um, here on the barrel. And, uh, you know, it makes a super, super simple install. Okay, guys, so I, uh, I just wanted to do a little close-up here. Um, this is the half-inch drive, one and three-sixteenths inch crow foot wrench uh, that I used in combination with my torque wrench and breaker bar um, to torque the... the Iron City Rifle Works LRP barrel. Um, they obviously make these in a full range of sizes. Um, they are meant pretty specifically for barrel nuts, but it is just a, you know, a typical crow foot wrench. So you could use it for other things as well if the size was right. The big difference between this and your typical crow foot wrench is that this is pretty thin. It's a pretty thin profile. So these are, you know, these specific, um, gunsmith wrenches do a great job and uh and i got this one uh free two-day delivery with amazon prime they're uh, 19.99 so uh from mentium they're like 13 dollars plus three or four dollars shipping so for a few dollars more you can get them with a free two-day shipping from amazon prime um, i do have links for this below in the description and uh, they should have all the main sizes that you need uh, for most any barrel nut that doesn't use, you know, something like this, uh, you know, a proprietary barrel nut like this. So if, if yours has a standard, you know, takes a standard crow foot wrench, uh, this uh, should do the trick for it. Uh, so that's really cool. The fact that you don't have to time this, that's, you know, for a lot of people, timing the, the barrel nut is maybe the most critical and hardest part 
of putting together your own AR-15 or AR-style weapon. So this takes all that guesswork and not really guesswork, but all that fine tuning on a, you know, a heavy torqued uh, barrel nut to get the timing right. It takes that totally out of the equation. So it makes this really easy to install. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then from there, I'll try and do this on camera as much as possible without dinging up my barrel here. Uh, but from there, the, uh, the handguard just comes in. And I, I do have the screws kind of partially screwed in here, so it's not going to slide all the way on. But, you know, just slides over. And then there's a couple of, uh, of hex uh, bolts here. And uh, there is uh, nuts on this side, um, you know, to, to tear or to tighten down the handguard so it doesn't slip. Now, if you're wondering, how does the barrel nut not need to be timed, uh, but the handguard stays where it needs to be uh, because that seems a little counterintuitive. You know, you typically time the barrel nut so that your handguard is lined, also lined up properly, you know, so your gas tube's lined up properly and then your handguard's lined up properly. Uh, but with this design, I don't know if you can see in here, um, these little notches here and here actually come up over the edge of your receiver uh, so this thing can't it actually can't twist out of alignment uh, so it's a really slick design uh, because there's really no way uh, for this thing to to you know you don't have to time it and it pretty much is impossible for it to come out of alignment and when I put this all the way on this uh for not being uh, Iron City upper for just being a, a mil spec upper, uh, and then this handguard being designed for Iron City's uh, upper and lower receivers, the the lines and the the aesthetically speaking, this handguard looks really good on just a plain Jane cheap mil spec receiver. Um, so you you know to make this gun look good, you don't have to spend big bucks if you don't want to, on the Iron City uh, receiver set. That being said, they're they're super cool looking. So, you know, if you had the money, it, it would be a, a good functional upgrade. They're also um, skeletonized quite a bit to make them nice and light and have this be a real nice, lightweight, soft shooting uh, system. But anyways, uh, the lines aesthetically do look really good. Um, we've got some cool markings here, um, the triangle logo for Iron City, uh, and the acronym for their name on both sides, uh, Made in USA up here at the top. Um, you know, if you wanted to do like a color fill on here, if you're into that kind of thing. So one thing to note here on this handguard, um, as we kind of move down, um, you know, from the, the receiver end uh, of the handguard uh, is that there there isn't any uh, Picatinny rails uh, on the, the back half of this, um, you know, the receiver end of this handguard. So you aren't going to be able to, you know, your optic is going to have to fit on top of your upper receiver Picatinny rails. Um, you know, that's done to reduce weight and in a 15 inch handguard, um, you know, you're typically a, using a, a scoped, you know, optic, a magnified optic of some sort or adjustable magnification optic of some sort um, with a, at least a carbine um, adjustable stock. Uh, you know, so you're typically not going to have a pistol stock on this. Um, so your optic is probably just gonna is gonna be just fine on on your receiver itself. Uh, you can get the angled arms that that would move it forward if if you needed to. So there's workarounds for it. So that's probably not gonna be a big deal for anybody uh, buying this specific handguard. But it is fair to note no Picatinny rails um, on the back half of this, the receiver side of this uh, this handguard. Um, there's also no M lock. Uh, slots for accessories back here. 
Um, it's, it's strictly for grip. Um, and you know, they took out as much material as they could to reduce the weight. Um, so, uh, I believe it's about 11 and a half to 12 ounces with the, with the barrel nut, um, which, you know, so it's not the lightest handguard out there, but it, uh, it's a pretty light handguard and, and they've done a good job of machining out a lot of material, uh, while leaving a nice sturdy, uh, handguard in place. You know, it's, there's nothing flimsy about this. Uh, but anyway, so no Picatinny rails on the back half, no M locks on the back half. When you get to that front third, the, you know, as you get out closer to the, um, the end of your barrel, the muzzle of your barrel, uh, you do pick up um, M lock rails on three sides. So you've got it on the side, the bottom, and then the other side. Uh, so there's three slots for each of those. And it's uh, also probably fair to note that the side ones set back a little bit from the M locks on the bottom. Uh, so the there is this little cutout on the end where you get a little indentation on the side of the, the handguard. So those M locks set back a little bit from the M locks on the bottom as well as the Picatinny rail on the top. And so then that gets me to the Picatinny rail for a front sight. So most most people are gonna run an optic, you know, on a gun that, that would take this, uh, you know, this handguard, uh, again, probably for competition use. Um, but you do typically run backup iron sights um, or a light laser, 45 degree offset sights, whatever it might be. Um, you do have a Picatinny section machined into this uh, on the front of the handguard. So, um, you know, they didn't totally, totally leave you without ways to accessorize this uh, handguard. But it is fair to note that the back two thirds of this are just for aesthetics as well as grip. And then uh, you can move into your accessories. And they, they kind of explain that as, you know, most people put their accessories at the front of their gun anyways, out by the muzzle. So, um, you know, if you put a light on the side, light laser, or whatever it might be, or a vertical foregrip off the bottom or hand stop or something, offset sights, iron, backup iron sights or whatever it might be um, on the front of this. So. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of the feature set as far as accessorizing this uh, handguard. Um, and again, I, I can't say enough, you know, aesthetically it's one of the coolest looking handguards out there. Particularly if you're comboing it with one of their colored, their Cerakoted barrels, you've got uh, plenty of uh, visual uh, line of sight through this handguard. So you are gonna pick up that uh, that color. So if that's important to you at all, um, you are going to see your barrel through this uh, to some extent. Uh, so that's uh, kind of cool. So uh, yeah, so that's uh, the Iron City Rifle Works Berserker Light handguard, their newest handguard model uh, in the 15 inch. And guys, this uh, this looks really good on a 16 inch barrel. They do make a 16 and a half inch version of this. And I'd be curious to see if these little, this little shallow cutout here would be enough to safely put the 16 and a half inch handguard on a 16 inch barrel. Um, that would be something you'd want to confirm with them before ordering it. But if you're looking for that maximum sight radius uh, and to, you know, cover up, you know, to where your muzzle device is kind of overlapping uh, the the handguard, uh, that would be worth checking out. I think it would be pretty close to being a, um, safe to use that way. Um, you know, you don't want your handguard to cover up any of the ports on your muzzle device, uh, cause you're going to get a lot of blowback and, and, uh, probably damage your, your handguard and, and who knows what else, but I, it might work. It might be close, but the 15 inch does look really good. Uh, you're left with just enough of a little gap. You do see the barrel at the end before the muzzle device starts, but it's it's pretty minimal. Um, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I thought about asking them about the 16 and a half, if it would work on the 16 inch barrel, um, but I just went with this. Um, it was a little cheaper and, 
and uh you know i just decided that well if i was getting the blue barrel so more the more of the blue that showed the better so it didn't become important for me at all uh so i just went the 15 and i think it looks great so i would highly recommend the 15 inch but just so you know there is a 16 and a half inch version that might work on a 16 inch barrel and obviously it would would work great on an 18 inch barrel um or longer depending on you know what you're doing um, but this is a super solid, um, pretty lightweight AR-15 handguard. And so now we're going to do a quick install. Uh, this is super simple. And uh, I've already got the barrel nut installed because I did the, the install video for the barrel already. And uh, so that's there. Um, as it pertains to the handguard, the one thing you need to know or that's uh, a great feature, which I've already kind of talked about, was that the barrel nut does not need to be timed to the upper receiver. So all we had to do was we did our, our couple of light torques to, to mate the threads of the barrel nut and the receiver you know, broke them free, and uh, we got our, our anti-seize compound on there and kind of cleaned up the excess in between, uh, torquing this down a couple times at 30 pounds. And then, then we set it to 50 pounds, torqued it, and it's good to go. Uh, 50 pounds is what Iron City recommends. Uh, you could go a little lighter. Um, you don't need to go any heavier. Uh, I think they said, you know, 45, 50 pounds is kind of the sweet spot. And since you don't need to time it, there's no adjusting your torque wrench and going from 50 pounds to 52 pounds or 55 pounds to try and get your your uh, gas tube alignment just right. You don't have to worry about it with this. So we just torqued it to 50 pounds and it's good to go. Then we added our, our gas block and our gas tube in there. We got that tightened down. Uh, we checked the bolt carrier was properly able to mate with the gas tube. We don't have any alignment issues. And so now we're ready to install the handguard. And that's really simple. So it just got a couple of hex screws with uh, some nuts on the other side. Um, I've got those in my hand here. And so all you gotta do is slide this over. It's a free float handguard. So this is pretty similar to any AR-15 free float handguard that you're gonna get. So you can see how this, this mates up. So I've got this as far as I could get while it was in the vise and you can see the alignment notch right here. And I'm gonna try and put this in while staying on camera and you can see how that mates with the upper receiver. It's pretty seamless for not being a matched upper receiver. Uh, the lines on this are super clean looks like they were meant to come together everything is real even and real tight fitting there's no i mean there's really not much play at all there considering these are not matched parts the beveling on the edge of the picatinny rail here matches up real nice on both sides and uh, so we're looking really good so the last part of this install is going to be putting the nuts into the side that, that's shaped like a hex screw, and then tightening the hex screws. You could, again, you could use Loctite on these. I don't, I check these screws relatively often that they're staying tight as I use the gun. And I like to take this off to clean the barrel or adjust my gas block or swap parts. So I don't Loctite this, but you definitely could. And they recommend 30, no more than 35 pounds of torque on this hex nut, this hex screw. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab those. I set them down here. All right, and so then all I have to do is torque this down to 35 pounds. But there you go, that's the uh, the upper receiver, or the, um, that's the handguard install. Iron City Rifle Works Berserker Light Handguard over the top of the Iron City Rifle Works LR, new LRP barrel and blue so from their custom shop guys it looks great uh fit and finish is fantastic and uh they really made up well here you can see just a little bit of that 16 inch barrel sticking out of the end 
uh, you know, I, I couldn't be any happier with how this comes together.